As the global population continues to grow and developing nations increase their energy consumption, the International Energy Outlook anticipates that total energy demand will increase by 56% between 2010 and 2040. Concerns about energy security, high oil prices, and the effect of fossil fuels on the environment have prompted the expansion of the field of alternative energy research. In comparison with photovoltaic cells, wind turbines, and hydrogen fuel cells, uh, biomass is still the most economical means of converting solar energy to fuel. Even after alternative technologies have been developed, liquid fuel will still be necessary in a variety of industries, such as aviation, maritime shipping, and trucking. Microbial processing of lignocellulosic materials into liquid biofuels is a promising alternative to uh, current petroleum-based fuels. However, production costs using current technologies remain prohibitively high. Consolidated bioprocessing is a technique that could significantly reduce these production costs by combining um, enzyme production, enzymatic hydrolysis, and microbial fermentation into a single bioreactor. Many institutions researching consolidated bioprocessing work to integrate cellulolytic and fermentative functionalities into a single organism. However, this strategy has yet to result in an organism with sufficiently high yields and productivities for commercial viability. This summer, I have had the opportunity to do research in Dr. Nina Lin's lab in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Michigan, under the guidance of PhD candidate Tatiana Seleski. The Lin lab takes an alternative approach to consolidated bioprocessing. The lab aims to design a synthetic microbial consortium whereby organisms with complementary functional specialties work together and stably coexist. This approach reduces the metabolic load and the number of functionalities that must be optimized in a single organism. My project is focused on optimizing a co-culture of the fungus Trichodermoreceae and bacterium E. coli for the production of isobutanol from cellulosic feedstock. While this consortium has been shown to convert cellulose to isobutanol, improved yield and titer are necessary for the process to be economically viable on an industrial scale. My project has taken two approaches to develop E. coli strains better suited to produce isobutanol in co-culture. In both methods, Isobutanol and byproduct concentrations were monitored by high performance liquid chromatography, also known as HPLC. The first approach is to delete genes in E. coli strains, thereby eliminating competing product pathways. Deletion of ADHE, FRDB, and PTA genes was successful in reducing concentrations of the side products ethanol, succinate, and acetate, respectively while also increasing isobutanol production in monoculture and co-culture on microcrystalline cellulose. The second approach is to develop an E. coli strain using an evolutionary strategy. The strain is grown with the valine analog norvaline in co-culture conditions to drive flux through the isobutanol biosynthesis pathway and allow for the evolution of a high isobutanol producing strain adapted to the co-culture environment. These methods have the potential to successfully produce isobutanol at high yield and titer. This renewable fuel could immediately decrease dependence on gasoline, as isobutanol, unlike ethanol, can be put directly into existing engines. I am honored to have had the opportunity to contribute to research in such an important field.